can't beat that sound for sure. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you could, I'd like to ask you guys to subscribe. Um, but today, uh, since I got pretty good conversation going about my uh, response to the Mach 1, I figured I'd do the same thing. Let's wipe this thing off. There we go, that's better. I figured I'd do the same thing for the Mach E. Um, specifically, the Mach E GT prototype that was just released. Um, Ford, I think, after seeing the great response that the uh, Bronco was starting to receive, you know, and I'm sure they had it planned way before that, but I'm sure they were, were less than thrilled with the, the you know, the backlash that the, the Mach-E has generated. And so I think in order to quell that, they decided to put out a performance Mach-E. So what they did is they reached out to RTR and Ford Performance worked with RTR to create a track specific uh, performance uh, Mach-E GT. So they took the base Mach-E GT which has a 459 horsepower and 619 foot-pounds of torque, which that's coming from two motors, and that's very, very impressive as it is. But as everybody, I mean, if you know anything about electric motors, uh, they are instant torque, and it, they have a lot of torque, like immediately. Uh, there's no, no build-up to it. So um, that's pretty much that's pretty much standard for all electric motors. Is if you and people who have been following Tesla for a while, they'll know that. Um, but they took what they did for the Mach E GT 1400 is they essentially put on five extra motors. So you've got three motors in the front and four motors in the back. Uh, they also upgraded, I believe, the batteries to a higher discharge battery, uh, high di higher discharge rate, uh, or a battery capable of higher discharge rate. Um, and just uh, in order to, you know, power those motors. And in order to put all that power to the ground. They put these crazy aero kits all over the car. They said the spec sheet said that at 160 miles an hour, I think it should be putting down. Uh, I think they said it was uh, 2,300 pounds. I think it was 2,300. Uh, I might be wrong, but uh, I mean, just ridiculous amounts of downforce. Um, that being said, that uh, I mean, they, they the promo video they put out. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was badass. Uh, I. I am a person who I appreciate a vehicle for what it is. I thought that for what that thing was, it is it's an amazing piece of engineering. Now that being said, I'm sure uh, that's I mean it's a prototype. There's probably there's obviously at least no stated plan to release a performance model such as that to the public. Uh, maybe they will in the future. Who knows? Uh, but. Um, I didn't read anything about it. Um, I didn't, so I didn't see a, a plan to release it. However, uh, for for what they released, they had they showed Von Gittin Jr. in there driving. It, you know, going up with um, going up with Ken Block and a bunch of other known Ford performance drivers. A bunch of them I haven't heard of personally, but um, it was just amazing to see how that thing handled, how it was able to replicate a lot of the performance driving we see in our in a lot of the vehicles that we really like uh out there a lot of the mustangs and uh you know that that is able to keep pace with those high performance mustangs uh but i mean i don't think there was ever doubt that an electric motor was capable of great things i just think that there's a lot of backlash because we like our uh our blips of the throttle right and uh, they don't have that anymore with the i'm gonna have to open the window it's hot they don't have that anymore uh and i think that's the way we're trending i think that everybody knows that coming down the road eventually there will not be combustion motors. Uh, I think we're a long way off from that. And personally, I don't think that the the way that we're trending for electric motors right now, I don't think that's sustainable. Uh, these rare earth metal batteries, you know, eventually they're, they're called rare earth metals for a, for a reason. You know, eventually they're going to be harder and harder to find. And honestly, I think the way of the future for clean energy is hydrogen cells. Uh, also because of the infrastructure. Uh, that's required to maintain an all-electric, uh, you know, motor pool for the whole country. I just don't think it's there. We do, we're, we're shutting down more and more nuclear plants, and I just don't see clean energy outside of nuclear power as any way to possibly power an entire country's worth of electric vehicles. But I don't think I have to worry about that in my lifetime. I get to enjoy this. I'm gonna enjoy this until the day I die but um, I do think it's cool I wouldn't honestly the uh, 
the Mach-E GT is supposed to do zero to 60 and just as fast as my boss. Um, I would not mind, I wouldn't mind having a, a, a Mach-E as a daily driver. I mean, if it was something for like local driving to and from work, plug it in. I mean, I think that's kind of, that's kind of cool. I wouldn't mind having a Tesla either, but um, I'm, I'm not old school. I do like my old school noise, but uh, I mean, I'm not against it. Now, that being said, I do, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious to me that the, uh, you know, the prototype is just a political stunt, or not political stunt, I'm sorry, a publicity stunt uh, to gain more favor for the Mach-E. Uh, they saw the negative light it was getting painted in, and they just wanted to show that what people think electric cars can do and what they can actually do is different. And I, I, I always knew what an electric vehicle can do, do, but I don't think a lot of people did. And a lot of people are still aren't ever going to accept the Mach-E for its new name, the Mustang, because uh, it's it's not. It's a it's a four-door SUV. They should if if they wanted to do anything that's kind of semblance and any, any sort of semblance of the Mustang, they should have just called it the Mach-E. They shouldn't have called it Mustang at all. You just call it the Mach-E, and there's ne I mean there's never been a Mach-E, and it's its own it's its own name brand right there. And you just branch off of that, and you've already got the mock uh, moniker from Mustang. So, I mean, there you go. I think that would have been the way to go. You'd have way less backlash. People would be more accept. People who are already Mustang owners would be more accepting of it. Um, a lot of Mustang owners, I think. I mean, I think there's less that actually care than than we're actually you actually see on social media. I think. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I I think I think it's cool. I'd own one. I want I want to buy it myself it'd have to be gifted to me because I can't I can't drop that kind of dough but um, let me know what you guys think I mean I, I I don't mind electric cars I know I I think that the uh, the fact that they're pretty much I, my under, my understanding is that after 10 years you know they're pretty much cooked but uh, maybe I'm wrong if you have an electric car and you've had it longer than 10 years let me know I just I'm curious uh, you know because I can buy a 10 year old car two thousand dollars and it could be my daily driver every day to work matter of fact that's what i got i have a matter of fact i have a 20 year old car a 20 year old mercury grand marquee that i daily to and from work every day uh but i don't think i'm going to be able to, i'd be able to buy a uh, you know a 20 year old battery vehicle because i think the batteries would be done uh but i don't know maybe i'm wrong someone fix me if i am but uh comment down below let me know what you think of the mach e uh what you think of the uh of the um, the new prototype, uh, you know they, they they advertised that it was tuned, performance tuned. I mean I don't know how much maybe maybe my interpretation of tuning is different. I, when I think tuning, I think tuning a motor, uh, and I don't think there's much tuning to an electric motor. Uh, you might be able, if you want to call tuning, you know setting up suspension and all that, then sure, fine. Uh, they set up suspension, put on aero kit, but outside of that, I don't think they did all that much. Uh, they added, actually, I lied. They added, so they added five motors on top of what the GT had, and they also added like a ridiculous cooling kit because that thing has the potential to be a hell ball of fire. But uh, yeah, it's cool. I liked it. So the Mach E, they gave it 1400 horsepower, which at the battery draw rate that thing's gonna have, it'll probably last you less time than a remote control car, remote control battery operated car. I can't imagine it lasting very long. I mean, it's not going to last long. That kind of power draw is going to be ridiculous, especially for seven motors. But, um, you know, it is, it is still very impressive what, uh, how much power they were able to harness on that vehicle. drawback to electric vehicles the whining the choppy chop oh yeah appreciate you watching my video uh, comment down below let me know what you think of the uh, Mach-E prototype GT uh, 1400 uh, it's a very impressive vehicle for what it is I appreciate it for what it is 
I mean, my still favorite and favorite combustion motors, absolutely. How can you not be? I mean, listen to the cars. They sound amazing. But uh, just let me know what you think below. Um, and uh, appreciate you watching again. Subscribe. Take care.